confond pas la F1 et le karting. Et je suis gentil. Voilà. Maintenant, next. Je parle même plus de vous. Some footballers exceed at the subtle game of trash talking. A fine art in the field of mind games designed to take your adversary out of the game. Today, we'll take a look at six of the greatest trash talkers in football. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. What happens on the field stays on the field. A line every football fan and player knows, and the concept Zlatan is the king of. In a match between his LA Galaxy and Real Salt Lake, Zlatan won with a 78th minute goal that he chose to taunt Nedjim Onioha with. Ibra chose the English center back as his victim of the day, talking him down, going head to head with him, and just taking the p I like to feel alive. I like it when it becomes duels, and that's because sometimes, not that I fall asleep, but I don't feel alive if they don't activate me. We know all this because Onyoha made it public as soon as the match ended. He kept saying, you know what, I'm gonna hurt you, I'm going to do you, you just watch, there's enough time, I'm going to do you. After scoring, Zlatan told him, you don't mess with me in the game, you don't mess with me. Zlatan's game of talk is as important to him as his game of ball. They need to activate me or else it becomes too easy. I know me. When I get angry, I feel good. Zlatan is the Muhammad Ali of football in that sense. You just don't mess with him. He'll either score against you or kick the living shit out of you. I mean, that's why I chose also to go to the Premier League because I will never turn down a challenge where many players would be comfortable and they will choose something that is more easier or more comfortable. I would not. I will take the hardest thing that there is out there. Jose Mourinho. If trash talking is about mind games, Jose Mourinho is the brightest brain in the game. Once, Mourinho stunned everyone by deciding to name not only his starting 11 for a match, but also the lineup that Barca boss Frank Rijkaard would play. Barcelona fielded the exact 11 players, just as Mourinho had requested. For years, he wore out Arsene Wenger, to the point where it got physical between them. But his greatest win was to make Pep Guardiola lose his temper. It was during the glorious 2011-2012 season in which Real Madrid and Barcelona played four Clásicos in 18 days. One La Liga matchup, a Copa del Rey final, and two legs in the Champions League semifinal. Jose just couldn't stop Pep's fantastic tiki-tock aside, so he dragged Guardiola to the mud, the conference room. He can say or do whatever he wants. In this room, Mourinho is the chief, the boss. I do not have to compete with him in here. Pep and Barcelona won the football battle by far, but Mourinho showed the pressure could make Guardiola crack. Hired by Real Madrid to stop the Catalan genius, after the season, Pep moved away from Camp Nou. For me, it's the most important trophy of my career because it's the last. That's the way I, I look at things. Cristiano Ronaldo. It's a fact. CR7 has an ego to match his football records, but also his bank account. Cristiano is a very confident guy, much like Zlatan, and it doesn't hurt that he can score a match-winning goal at any given moment. In the Madrid Derby of 2016, Atletico Madrid couldn't cope with him, which made Coque go mad. He called CR7 a f to which Cristiano replied, yeah, a f loaded with money. He also scored a match-winning hat trick. Going back to the famed 2011-2012 La Liga season, Cristiano scored the title-decisive goal to win at Camp Nou against Barcelona and told everyone to calm down. Absolute boss move. In his most recent Italian days, Chris faced Atletico Madrid once more in the 2019 UCL round of 16. Schube lost the first leg against Madrid, with fans harassing CR7 and Simeone celebrating like this. Before leaving the stadium, Cristiano reminded the Atleti fans that he has five champion leagues, Atletico, zero. Then, back home, Ronaldo put three goals past Oblak, kicked them out of the tournament, and did a very spot-on Simeone impression. Gerard Piquet Soy así. Yo quiero que el Madrid pierda siempre. Esta es la rivalidad deportiva que ha pasado toda la vida aquí en España. Troll or trash talker? A bit of both. PK revealed a while ago he's the king of WhatsApp. Earlier this season, when we were already eight or nine points clear of Real Madrid in the league, I started a special group for some of the guys on the Spanish national team who play for Real Madrid in Barcelona. 
All we do in that group is talk to one another about Barca and Real. It's the best. We're just like kids. PK's list of incidents include lifting a manita to Real Madrid fans, taking Jose Mourinho for a joyride at the press conference, a battle area he knows too well. But PK has a thing for their neighbors, Espanol. He's told them to sh after scoring against them. He refuses to call them Espanol of Barcelona. But one blow went too far. I have more money than the budget of Espanol this year. Why does it always come to money? Megan Rapino. If we're talking trash talk game, former U.S. President Donald Trump is second to none. Except maybe for Megan Rapino. Interviewed just before the start of the 2019 World Cup, she was asked if she was excited to go to the White House. To which she replied, I'm not going to the f White House. I stand by the comments that I made about not wanting to go to the White House, um, with the exception of the expletive. My mom will be very upset about that. Besides being a baller, Rapino is an activist and has no sympathy for the former Republican president and his policies. Trump saw this, lost it, and went on Twitter. I'm a big fan of the American team and women's soccer, but Megan should win first before she talks. Finish the job. Finish the job they did. The U.S. women's national team won the World Cup. Megan Rapino was on fire. It was a fantastic play as Rapino backed up her words. Trump lost the speech battle and had to pretend to be happy that the U.S. won in the end. And no, no one went to the White House. Hey, everybody is with me. Um, we don't want to go to the White House. Um, so, I, so I figure that's why the, the invitation hasn't, hasn't come. Maybe sent to my mail just sort of slowly to get here. Emiliano Martinez. Emiliano Martinez has gone from zero to hero after hibernating for years on Arsenal's bench. The Argentinian goalkeeper took the job for his national team after a fantastic Premier League season with Aston Villa, and he's not likely to lose it anytime soon. His Copa America performance was sensational, and the key moment in it came in the semifinals against Colombia. The match had to go to a penalty shootout, and Martinez saved three penalties. The secret behind it? Trash talking. Martinez harassed Colombia's penalty takers, shouting at them and psyching them out. No one has it worse than Jerry Mina. Martinez warned Mina that he knew him, and while the Colombian was running to the ball, he repeated this like a mantra. I'm gonna eat you up. I'm sorry, brother, but I'm gonna eat you. It worked. Martinez revealed he saw his anxiety pouring out. This is football. I'm an Argentinian and I want to win. I did it because I saw a chance. When a boxer sees his rival on the verge of being knocked out, he knocks him down. Trash talking isn't for everyone, but for those who can pull it off, it gives them a final edge to their game. Marco Materazzi used it on Sedan, and it won him a World Cup. Leo Bonucci made fun of the entire football nation of England, but it's easy to do this when you've already won. And then you have players like Luis Suarez and Diego Costa, who will shout, fight, insult you, and even take a bite out of you if needed. But we're not sure that's trash talk as much as just being a complete cat. In the end, football is about winning, and trash talkers just wanted a bit more than others.